Prince Charles and Nicola Sturgeon led the mourners at a memorial service today marking 100 years since the Iolaire disaster, in which 201 sailors died on their way home from World War I. The naval yacht sank just yards from the Isle of Lewis coastline in Scotland on January 1, 1919, in one of Britain's worst maritime disasters in peacetime. Today Charles spoke of the indescribable grief of the islanders after the tragedy, which Scotland's First Minister M. Sturgeon called a cruel twist of fate after the men had survived the war. Meanwhile relatives of the dead spoke of the blanket of grief which covered the island community in the wake of the disaster, saying that virtually all those that died came from the same place. At the service schoolchildren from across the Outer Hebrides tossed 201 red carnations, one for each of the dead into the sea near the wreck site. Charles, 70, unveiled a sculpture to commemorate the Iolaire, a bronze depiction of a coiled heaving line which recalls the heroism of John Finley MacLeod who swam ashore with a rope to help rescue 40 of the 79 men who were saved. He and Ems Sturgeon both laid wreaths at a Stornoway monument which overlooks the scene of the tragedy, as did representatives from emergency services and other organizations. Psalms were sang in Gaelic and English during the ceremony, as was the national anthem. The occasion ended with the diver taking a wreath to the site where the ship sank. Charles said, after miraculously surviving their military service during the First World War, they perished only a few hundred yards from their final destination. It is perhaps understandable that, until recently, the circumstances surrounding this most tragic of events in the history of the islands have not been widely discussed. Charles has also written a foreword for The Darkest Dawn, a new book on the tragedy, calling it a deeply poignant tribute to all those who tragically lost their lives. Writing in the official remembrance program, M. Sturgeon, 48, said, sadly, the losses of the First World War did not end with the signing of the armistice. There was a further cruel twist of fate for some on their journey home. Tragically, over 200 men drowned in sight of Stornoway Harbor and the safety of their own homes. The impact on the tight-knit island community was beyond measure. The grief at that final moment must have been so very hard to take. That sadness is still felt today, as can be seen by the commemorations being organized for the centenary of this devastating accident. As anniversaries pass, it is ever more important that our commitment to remember those who fought and died for our future, remains. Meanwhile descendants of men who died on board the ship spoke of the lasting impact the disaster has had on their communities. Sharon Smith's great-uncle Malcolm Thompson died in the disaster aged 27, but he was never supposed to be on the doomed ship. The able seaman was due to head back on an earlier sailing but had bumped into two friends from the island's small community of Swain Bost, and decided to return home with them on the HMYIO lair. M. Smith said, they were coming home at the end of the First World War, they were coming home in time for New Year celebrations, there was so much joy and happiness among that. For them to lose their lives so close to home, in such tragic circumstances, had a tremendous effect on the island. It was almost like a blanket of grief had covered the island. The Darkest Dawn's co-author Malcolm MacDonald, whose own grandfather perished on board the Isle Air, said there were still more questions than answers about the tragedy. He said, many of the young women left behind ended up living out their days as spinsters. Like those that had died in the war, a number of those drowned on the Isle Air were engaged to be married or were going to get engaged when they arrived home. This island-wide phenomenon had been a wall of silence that descended on the entire community after the tragedy with people not wanting to talk about it at all. There was strong opposition initially towards erecting the Iolaire Memorial as it had stirred up painful memories for many. Around 250 children lost their father, eight children were born after their father died. Unlike the Titanic, where the victims came from all over the world, Virtually all those that died came from the same place. The impact was unimaginable. They were all friends, 